you can't really prepare yourself or contemplate how long it's going to be and all the places and experiences you're going to have. So packing your bag for three months and thinking that you're not going to be at home and you're not going to see your family and your friends is, is a, yeah, quite a strange experience. And uh, it's one of those things, and I've had it oh, many times before, that once you're there, you feel much better and, and the, the sort of anxiety leading up to the, the journey to the first show drains away and, and you sort of instantly set in, uh, in tour mode again. We've toured Canada um, a, a few times, so it, uh, whilst it kind of you're starting this crazy adventure, we kind of knew what to expect. We've been there before. We we had headlined Canada maybe about 14 months beforehand, and we hadn't had the greatest experience. So going into it, we had very very low expectations. In Halifax, we'd only played once before, and. It was great. I mean, it was very small shows. I mean, you, you're talking a couple hundred people each, uh, the underage and the overage. But the crowds were brilliant, and, and it was very much the same in, in Quebec City. And uh, very quickly, we realised that the tour wasn't going to be the the disaster that we thought it, it was going to be. Toronto is like an amazing place for us to play and we were playing the Opera House and we supported a few times there and it's a big, it's like a 900 capacity venue. I mean we were looking at the ticket sales on the plane over and they were pretty ugly <laughs> to say the least. I mean it were, I think it was about a week before the Toronto show, uh, it had done like 150 tickets or something appallingly bad. But it was... Uh, it, Really incredible show. I mean, one of those shows where it's kind of, it makes all the bad shows worth going through. This is this is the glamour, the glamour here of touring. Okay, well, what are you doing? Quick! Give us a back! <laughs> this is what we do at Fuck. Oh, come on. Five albums in. <laughs> Five albums in. You couldn't get a bin like this on album two. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm ready for bed. In the van. In the How do you make it go forward? Okay, I'll uh... Regina in Saskatchewan, um, Canada, and uh, we are over halfway through our little tour. Done all these other ones, which have all been great. This whole tour's been fantastic. It's all kind of climaxed tonight in Regina, where there is about 30 people here. So, as I say, you don't know what you're going to get with these runs. 
So, I mean, we're going to try and make the best of it. I mean, I just don't really know how, you know, you just try and have fun, I guess. That's the thing, isn't it? Having fun. Um, but us having fun, I fear, might not might not result in the most professional performance we've ever put on. Yes. This is our backstage for the day. Just going, <laughs> <laughs> playing a show later in a tiny hall. Um, I'm just going to wash off my shorts. <laughs> Tell us how you think the tour's been. The tour's been fantastic. So, uh, tell, tell the people watching the DVD, not me. No, the tour's been amazing. We, uh, we weren't expecting anything like this. We didn't really know what we were getting ourselves in for, but it's been great so far. Looks like we're about to wrap it up with another, uh, another good in in Vancouver. Um, you know, I couldn't really ask for much more. Just every show's been, like, packed. Vagina. It's been going off. That's a fucking job, the world tour really started once we got to China because that's when we were just completely out of our comfort zone. I don't know anything about it because I don't really, I've never spoken to any bands about going there because very few bands have been there. The culture is so different because of the, so, you know, the bands on various social media and, and whatnot. So we had no feedback. There's nothing, there's no one saying, oh, was it, you know, oh, I'm coming to your show in Shanghai or whatever. It's completely blind. Landing in China, you know, looking out the window and just even just seeing the way all the buildings are laid out and these blocks and it's all the same and it's all very organised and it's quite bizarre and I've never seen anything like it. It's a bit alien for us coming to China because wherever we go in the world usually we, uh, we get a pretty good idea of what we're getting ourselves in for because Facebook shows us where we're popular and we have people, you know, saying come here and it was great when you were here and all that. But in China they don't have Twitter, they don't have Facebook, so you you don't get any of that. So we've come over and it's you know, it's just interesting to see how it works over here with no real Western media behind it. Like they have their own they have their own Facebook and their own Twitter, but as far as I'm aware we're not really represented on that at all, so it's just uh, you know, interesting to see how it works. Very good. Very, very good. You want to try sour? Yeah, it's tempting. Yeah, this cocoa. Beer. Beer. Uh, ostrich. Snake. Snake. Oh, freaking me out, guys. Uh, I don't know if I do it. Christian said snake, if you want it. I'm not sure that this is ethically sound. So far, it's been wild, to say the least. Uh, 
we went up the uh, Great Wall of China, which was uh, unbelievable. Like, even standing up there didn't even feel like it was real, you know, looking around and it just, it just blew all of our minds. Like, the whole thing looked fake. You know, you, sp you spend your whole life seeing it on TVs and in travel guides and stuff. And then when you actually get up there, it's, uh, it's a lot to take in. From the promoter Paul that some of the crowds are a little bit odd uh, only in the sense that they aren't familiar with the, the way you're supposed to act at a show um, so especially in Beijing and Shanghai we have very very static crowds and it was only a hundred or 150 people uh, which is fine you know we're in Beijing and Shanghai and, and we play shows like that much closer to home, so it wasn't the end of the world in terms of attendance. It was just such a strange environment to, to play in because you get nothing back. I think we're, uh, we're quite used to, even if people think we're dog shit, at least some sort of... At least they're chatting in between times Yeah, going, at least they're saying... These, lot, these are a bit shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, even if they're slagging us off at some noise, but it was, you know, you could, you could hear a pin drop between every, almost every beat. It was, it was wild. But no, it was, it was cool. We're in Beijing and there's like hundred and something kids here, so... Onwards to Shanghai. 欢迎您乘坐和谐号动车组列车，您乘坐的这趟列车是绿色环岛无烟列车，请不要在车厢内连接处和卫生间内吸烟，烟为一旦有人吸烟。Not many bands really tour in China until five years ago, so that means we have a potential of the market. Like when the band tour in Asia, most of the band go to Japan, but everybody knows that Japan. Is just a part of Asia. It's not a whole Asia. Then people think about China, but it's really hard to come to China, like tour, because they have no idea. Well, my label's goal is like we want to bring the best band in the world to come to tour in China and show the young generation what is the modern rock is like. And uh, the young young people in the world they get rock and roll. Why not Chinese people?
Right now we're at the airport in Shanghai and uh, well, we finished the show pretty late yesterday and then had some food. So we ended up going to bed about half two, three. Uh, it's now about 6.30 here. We left the hotel at six. What? Hey, I'm boggled. I think it's a little bit messed up the dates. Yeah, it's a, it's a completely different time. Yeah. Huh? Just as well we didn't get those two day t-shirts. That would have been a big deal. I... You don't normally find out <laughs> the dates are swapped on the day of the show. And I missed it. But he said, oh, they sound similar. <laughs> Beijing, Wuhan, <laughs> Shanghai, and Can we take a can we take a steak on how far it is from Guangzhou to Wuhan? 13 hours and 8 minutes oh, on 1,020 kilometers. Yeah, they're really looking at least 4 hour, 5 hour flight. It just doesn't make much sense. Yeah. <laughs> We've checked in our bags, got our boarding passes, and they don't say Wuhan, they say Guangzhou. Now, we did not know that we were playing there today. We've got a show to which no one may even show up tonight because they think it's tomorrow. Uh, and the same thing tomorrow. So we're gonna go to Hong Kong tomorrow, it looks like. So uh, we've got an extra day in Hong Kong, so every cloud. Uh, we are backstage in uh, Guangzhou and uh, getting ready for what appears to be quite an interesting show. Everyone's sat down at uh, tables and chairs just in front of the stage at the moment. We're doing a 17 song set because we're the only band playing. Um, the room could fit over a thousand people. Yeah, so it's a huge room. Um, our tour manager, Ben, who has no front of house experience, has been doing front of house. Um, should be should be a good one. train and you drive for a bit and then you go through a tunnel and you come out of the tunnel and all of a sudden it's everything's clean and blue sky it was really surreal and you know the difference was instant Hong Kong. it was a, a startlingly large change 
in, uh, in culture, given that it was just a two hour train ride from, from Guangzhou. So the promoters for the show met us and took us off to the hotel and were put up in this brand new, fancy as hell, huge hotel. And it's just, yeah, it's the complete reverse of what we've been experiencing in China. Quite a relief, really. But I mean, it was over the top, it was absurd. It was going such a 180 switch. Okay, now we're at 103. Now we're, I think. No? We're still moving. 101, 103. Tall building. What I'm trying to say is it's tall, we have a tall building. It's quite a posh building. Today, I am 24. And as if today hasn't already been cool enough for the hotel and everything amazing that has also happened, we're now at the highest bar in the world. And uh, me and Alan are about to want a Blackberry Mojitos. So, expensive, but yellow ones. We are in Hong Kong on a day off and we are now at some sort of incredible beach. Uh, we're going to spend the day here. It's so beautiful, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. We don't get to do a lot of stuff like this on tour, really. Um, but yeah, two days off in places like Hong Kong, in the hotel we're staying in with the views that we've seen and. It's just ludicrous, it's what, it's what being in a band's supposed to be like. <laughs> it's what you think when you're a kid. Yeah, Hong Kong was kind of unlike anywhere we've ever been. And uh, on top of that, you're in this massive city, and then you can drive 20 minutes, and you end up at some deserted paradise beach where the water's like a bath. I mean, really, yeah, I mean, crazy. Just, the, um, just an amazing place, and I, I'd love to go back because, yeah, it was wicked, and and the show was great, and the, and the people, the promoters, um, were, did an amazing job and were really welcoming. It was just a really good time.
That was honestly one of the most crazy shows we've ever played outside of England. Ever. In fact, one of the, just the craziest shows ever. No, went into it not knowing what to expect. And that was just, start to finish, chaos. Absolute chaos. Crazy, Tokyo, man. Steve. You make the people crazy. You enjoy it? Enjoy. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> the people is all crazy and wandering. And... I think we all had this uh, completely ignorant assumption, or at least I did, I suppose, that China and Hong Kong, Southeast Asia, were all going to be sort of similar or comparable or something. I don't know, you kind of lump them all together and then you do it and you see how every single place is completely different. It's going back into the traffic and people beeping and pollution and it's just a little bit crazy, you know, but um, I think we were there for less than 24 hours and everyone was so thankful for us to be there and it made it all worth it and we had, we had a real laugh in the end. Great, great show. Thank you, Architect, for being here tonight. Perfect show. Yeah, Love you, Architect. Architect. It's great. Good job. The venue looks to be like a fucking mad game. Many layers, sort of. I don't really know how to describe it or how it's going to work. One monitor, uh, PA sort of in front of Tom or my space, <laughs> uh, sort of in some sort of like weird corner. Probably the worst drum kit I've ever seen. So damn flat last night. Was it's going to be really difficult, but. <laughs> They think it means a lot because uh, my fans in Singapore, I uh, tell them that good bands and architects come to Singapore and uh, we're very excited for the show. So yeah, we're pretty fucking stoked, you know, uh, for, for a chance to meet architects and... So Singapore! <laughs> So it's going to be an
Malaysia, Black Box Solaris. The Solaris Mall Complex of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, There's no atmosphere whatsoever. I, I'm showing you, I'm sure it'll be good, but right now it's like... I, yeah? I think what happened was there's a sort of guy talking to the crowd. He's actually, uh, he's killed them. He's killed it a bit. Can you guys make some noise for architects? That's not loud enough, man. Come on, man. They came all the way from the UK. Give it up. Make some noise for architects! Yeah. Yeah. It's all good. You guys ready? Yeah. Hey, hey, Black Box Solaris, are you guys ready? Yeah. No, give it up for Aki was the best crowd I've ever played to, I think. Again, like, the size doesn't even matter. You know, I don't know how many people are there, 350 or something like that. But you just never play to so many people that just love it. And they just, I don't know, they just, I don't know if it's the appreciation, but they just don't care. There's no one stood around on their phone, arms crossed or whatever. Like, it's a room full of 350 mentalists. That's a few words, but you get the picture. So freaking insane. Yeah. Yeah. Speechless. 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 <laughs> it was epic, beyond epic. Yeah. I don't know what these are called, but they're nice. What are they called? hopes for Jakarta certainly and, and we thought Bali would probably be pretty good um, but there was slightly less enthusiasm I'd say from the crowd and we were in an awfully big room in Jakarta and it, it was very strange because we turned up and did a press conference and we made out that we were made out that it was going to be a big big show and you know we certainly get a lot of um, feedback online from Indonesia but it, it didn't really materialize Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, no, it's very thoughtful. We've never thought of doing a bag number though. Fun like four or five today out of ten. Maybe we could have uh, cut back on that and just spent a little bit more on this. But you know, I don't want to fuss. Look, that hair That is messy. Look at that. 
We are we are pre-show in uh, Jakarta. We haven't set even sound checks yet, but we've just been pulled away to do a press conference. We don't know anything yet. We've just been told we're about to walk through a door. There's someone introducing us currently, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's all we know. It's a press conference in Jakarta. So watch this space. Yeah. Go on then, has anyone got any questions? Anyone in the room? <laughs> okay, ini adalah uh, pihak dari arsitek dan mungkin bisa perkenalkan dulu uh, pihak dari faceute-nya, mana faceute-nya? <laughs> so yeah, we, this is our first time in Asia, it's been really interesting. Every day provides a different challenge. Uh, today we expect to take the challenge head on and come out tops. Okay. ada yang sudah uh, dikenal adalah Killing Me Inside, Tertin, dan Siksa Kubur. Yeah. Oke, okay, kalau misalnya tadi kan udah nanya tentang Fatsuit yang rencananya bakalan juga bikin uh, bukan cuma sekedar kalau... I mean, uh, describe your, your band or your music in five words. Thank you. Five words. Five words. <laughs> five words. Five words. I know, I know, I know. It, I love you so much. Explosive, <laughs> passionate, really? heavy, <laughs> epic, <laughs> screamo. <laughs> Bali, baby. We just landed uh, in Bali uh, from Jakarta and we are now going to be here for a few days and play the show tonight. We're about to go to the venue uh, and then after that we're going to hang out here for two days in the sun, aren't we? We're going to have some fun, aren't we, mate? Me and Al are going to just hang out, go swimming, get some snorkels, go see what Bali's got to offer us, eh? Okay, so we'll get poisoned by some uh, deep sea creatures. Maybe one of us will get bitten by a shark. Landing there is immediately like, oh, this is this isn't a place where you play shows. This is a place where you go on holiday. And there's English people everywhere and Australian people everywhere. Yeah, but it's still not Western, it's still definitely in Southeast Asia. You know. One of the one of the decent promoters here that put on like Partway Drive and a bunch of other bands um, has said that he hasn't seen any promotion for this show whatsoever. Um, we overran before we went on, but like sound check and stuff, obviously because of just because that's what you do when you're in Southeast Asia. Um, and um, yeah, there was about 10, 15 kids there when we left. So. Um, not got high hopes. It's the first time Dan's played drunk in a long time. It's 
There's nothing to take the edge off what is arguably going to be the most awkward show of architects in 80 year history of playing shows. This could be the one that trumps it. It's, uh, it's a mountain and they're going to climb it and probably die. To so, uh, always be in that band that never gets the good promoters, never gets the good venues, never gets the good shows. Still doing it. So get out there and reach my game. Miserable. Pure miserable. Yeah? Other end of the job. Move forward, I'll kill myself. Standard. Standard with architects. Yeah. It is standard. And the fact that we're in Bali, I don't know why we were expecting a good show. Because other bands had good shows there. Yeah. yeah. I'm just trying to be nice, but you know, it should have been better than it was. Let's try, and, let's try and inject some realism into the proceedings. Been in this band for eight years, it was one of the worst shows I've ever played. <laughs> no, it was, genuinely. Crowd wise, yeah. I'll tell you what. Sound wise. Though. Every cloud has a silver lining, and the silver lining of Indonesia was being able to go on holiday in Bali for three or four days, and that was a, a, an amazing experience, and we got to stay in and make some amazing accommodations, which isn't something you, can, you tend to do uh, when you're on tour in Birmingham. Days off go is 
10 on 10. Spot on. Very, very tough. <laughs> Genah Amerika ring genah sampah tani samput kecumawi kan dari kering pemegang. It was like going back into the world that we know and it was like being more like being at home I suppose which after I think we had been on tour for maybe five or six weeks by that point and it was nice to see some more familiarities you know. So we just spent the last couple of days in Auckland in uh, New Zealand and it has been it's been great to kind of get back to almost kind of what we're used to, kind of, you know, a lot more Western than where we have been for the last couple of couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I think everyone, everyone felt a bit more at home yesterday. New Zealand is definitely the, the furthest away we've ever been from, from home. And it is literally on the other side of the world from us. But where we've been the last two weeks to where we are now, it feels like we're at home. The temperature is, is like England. The people are really nice. And we've just fit sh straight into it, straight away. I'm wearing jeans for the first time in two weeks. But trust me, it feels great. By comparison, uh, Wellington was like one of the coolest places I've ever been, but the show was a bit of a disaster for us. And we did our best, but if I remember Wellington for anything, it's not going to be the show, it'll, it'll be the place. And I was pretty gutted, probably more gutted about anywhere we had been so far that we had to leave so soon because I was just kind of pressed up against the airport window looking at it because. It's such a cool place. I've never been anywhere like that. I don't think there is anywhere else like that. And that kind of went to the top of my list of places I must go back and visit because I, I really liked Wellington for sure. It was a great place. Bloody Australia, didn't mean to do that. Going to Australia, very, very excited, aren't we? Yeah. It's so long since we've been there and we love it so Talk much. To the camera. Let's just get in a. Don't, don't, you don't need to tell me you're excited, I know. Try and focus. Just getting the group involved, which is one fish eye. That well. Uh, going to Australia, we're going to uh, Brisbane. It's going to be really, really nice. Haven't been there for ages. I can't wait to get there. Else. I should, I should blow That's the audience unbelievable away. enthusiasm. Try it again, Al, with a bit Smash more excitement. We are going to Brisbane, Brisbane. in Australia. It, it will be good. It has been a while since we have been there. Looking forward to it. Siri, like. <laughs> that is what you just said.
getting to Australia was something we were looking forward to for the whole run because we love touring there. It's a beautiful country and we have an awful lot of friends from there. So, you know, we were looking forward to seeing them. We've been to Australia three times before and it's always been our favourite place collectively to tour. Shows were vastly different from the rest of the run because we were supporting the Amity Affliction and playing with uh, the Ghost Inside. And you know, those guys, were, some of them were friends, some of them became very good friends by the end of it. But it was very different because we're supporting, and um, you know, we'd just been doing five, six weeks through Canada, China, and Southeast Asia where we're playing to. 20 people in Bali or, you know, at biggest, we were playing to six, seven hundred in Toronto. So then to come in and start playing to 2,000 people uh, was we obviously very, very different. I mean, and, and the big difference when you when you go into that, a show like that, when you're supporting is you're not playing for your crowd. You're you're advertising your band. You're you're like a, you know, billboard advert to say to people, Buy our album or buy a t-shirt, en enjoy our band. on it and uh, it's been amazing to kind of have like a group camaraderie again and because the rest of the tour that we've been doing uh, it, obviously in Asia it was just all of us and uh, you know no other bands that we really knew so to come on this and to make new friends in Amity you know almost instantly was amazing and also you know to see the ghost inside it's only the second tour we've actually ever done with them which feels crazy because we've known them for so long and you know they're such good dudes and They've had lineup changes as well, so it's been cool to meet like a bunch of, you know, amazing dudes. And it's def definitely a trip that we won't forget as a band. Uh, we just had some seriously fun times on it, and a lot of tours you kind of go into when you don't really know a band, sort of like put in a room, and you're like, right, you're going to be friends with these guys for two weeks. And uh, with Amity, it was just instant. We walked into the room, and they've been nothing but nice and super good dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely disgusting airport we're at today. We are in Canberra. No, we're not. We're in Adelaide. 
absolutely disgusting airport. I can't believe all these vile humans that are standing around here breathing my oxygen. We're here trying to go on. Who are these meds looking at me right here? Absolutely disgusting, especially that one with the red. Focus on him. Look over here again and I'll smack that smile off your face. Make sure to tell him that next time you see him. complete change of pace from Southeast Asia. We've uh, been spending a lot of days in the same city, so we've actually been able to kind of relax a little bit rather than having to fly every single day and, you know, travel around so much. But the shows have been a lot better for us than we're expecting. The venues have been uh, sort of a couple of thousand as opposed to a couple of hundred or even less like we were playing in Southeast Asia. So it's nice to, you know, play a more of a regular kind of show for ourselves but um, so where we've been doing these multiple shows we had a uh, we have four shows in Brisbane three in Melbourne it's, it's good to kind of play your show kind of get your shirt off stage and then leave it and you can kind of do whatever you want for the rest of the night whereas you do a run in places like Southeast Asia where you're a different city or a different country every day you gotta pack your shit down get back to the hotel wake up at stupid o'clock in the morning, fly somewhere, do the whole airport thing, which we're getting pretty pretty tired of now. I think we're all looking forward to kind of getting back on the bus and our more usual style of touring, where we sit around on our asses all day and sleep in till two or three in the afternoon. We've toured Europe for years. We did the, our first ever European tour 
two weeks after I finished my A-levels when I was 18, I think, and you know, we're still going to those same cities. We've been excited about Europe since the beginning of the tour and it's coupled with nerves because we've never headlined in Europe. We've done so many tours supporting, but we've never got round to headlining. Something else has always come up and it's got cancelled. And I was on the plane and showed the guys the ticket sales for the tour, and and again, it, it didn't fill us with didn't fill us with hope. So we just think like you know there could be 30 kids at these shows. There could be 500. We don't know. It's difficult for us to say beforehand what the turnout's going to be because we've never really done our own headline shows. I mean, we did some headline shows after we after we recorded Ruin and we came out, but we're planning to like between 15 and 50 people a night. So uh, you, you couldn't really, uh, there was nothing really to match it up against. For us to come out here, we didn't really know what to expect. But I mean, the, the reactions have been unreal. The expectations we had have been blown out of the water. Like this has been, not only has it been really fun and like really good shows, but everyone on the tour is a good dude and everyone is in the same mindset and everyone's looking out for each other and you know, we're just having a really good time and it's nice to kind of, you know, make new friends on tour and at the same time, you know, share like this amazing experience with everyone. Got our mates in while she sleeps on the bus with us. We, we kind of knew them before the tour started, like we've done you know a few shows here and there with them and we kind of know them through mutual friends and that, but um, we got, got along great from the first day, so I mean they, they tend to party a, probably a bit harder than us, but you know we try and keep up and they're all great lads and I think we, uh, we've, we've definitely just connected really well on this tour and I hope in the future we can do more of the world together and stuff. Um, it's nice to know that when you're sharing a bus with someone that you're actually going to get on with them and that everyone's kind of on the same page and stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, you've joined us in Germany. We are here for the World Beer Pong Championship. Here we are, Architects versus Hayes.
time was uh, the biggest show, what we expected to be, end up being the biggest show of the, of the European run. Um, and it was kind of like a, a landmark show of the whole world tour. It was, it was one of those shows where you, before you even go on stage, you, you know that it's going to be good. There's, there was a vibe in the room that was just great. You know, you could hear kids in the crowd getting excited and then bang, as soon as our intro music kicked in, you could hear everyone cheering and, you know, we were walking up the stairs and uh, me, Ali and Tom kind of just looked at each other and Ali turned around to me and was like, I'm actually nervous, like, and we, we don't really get nervous anymore, like, we kind of just go out there and do it and, but no, all of us last night were nervous and went on and instantly, as soon as we kicked into Alpha Omega, just the whole crowd like exploded. And I just had this smile from here to here that, you know, doesn't look very, you know, heavy when you're on stage trying to sing these like serious songs. But when there's that good of a crowd and you're going down that well and everything is just like falling into place, you can't like hide those emotions. Like it was, uh, it was amazing. It's one of those moments where you sort of look at the crowd and you feel like you're doing the right thing and you feel like uh, the show is almost legitimising all the effort that, you, that you've put in over the years. And um, yeah, so those are the kind of moments that, that, that being in this band, or any band really, is all about. I'll never forget the end of These Colours Don't Run. Like, it was the loudest I think I've ever heard it. And just as the end bit kicked in and the, the lights just went over the whole crowd, it was just like, it like took, fully took my breath away. I, I couldn't even believe what I was seeing. The whole run's just been way above our expectations. Uh, I mean, the whole world tour, but Europe especially, just been way, way above what we what we were expecting. You know, um, the fact that it is our headline show, we know that the you know the majority of the crowd are going to be there for us. And there, there hasn't really been a bad show. I mean, you know, some shows are a bit quieter, but there's never like really empty rooms. Even when we think it's going to be a disaster, it doesn't turn out to be a disaster. I think people can tell from you know our reactions and our responses on stage that like this stuff doesn't happen to us. We don't normally have five, six great shows in a row, let alone like four sold out in a row. Kind of moved uh, towards sort of Eastern Europe, uh, Slovakia, Slovenia, Hungary, uh, 
and they were just some of the most fun shows we've done on the entire world tour because and I guess uh, kind of there is a similarity in some way to uh, um, the Southeast Asian shows in a way. I mean, like this small room but full of kids and like they're all going crazy and, and it's great for every band on the bill. I guess, you know, everyone says places don't really get many shows too often. I think everyone there is just really thankful. And you see it like when you go out the crowd after and speak to people there, they're just really excited. and. They're always saying thank you for coming when, you know, I think really it's, you know, the pleasure's all ours because the shows are so much fun that, uh, yeah, we should be thanking them really. Venues without security and like barriers, you know, being able to like get kids up on stage and not just like have them chucked off straight away, you know, like give them the microphone and like sing along. And for me, if if it was possible for us to do every single night of a tour in a venue with no barrier, I would do it in like 600, 700 cap clubs because that's perfect. I hate being really far away from kids. I hate not being able to see people's faces and people's expressions. For me, the further the crowd is from the stage, that's the more of the vibe that gets sucked out of the room. Quite frankly, it's pointless. People know what to do at shows. People know how to look after each other. And I get it nowadays, you know, you have to be careful and, you know, people can get injured. But out here in the people and everyone that work at the venue are just so much more up for helping you out and so much more willing to, to be like kind and look out for you. you know, in, in some places I'll jump in the crowd and you know, in other, in other countries and places I get pulled out by security and you know, told not to do it again and if I do it again then I'm going to get in trouble and here I'll jump in the crowd and if I'm coming back out the security push me back in. You know, that, that's what I love about this place and that's what I love about touring here. Yeah! 
bunch and so expectations are higher and there's more pressure to, um, to sort of match what we've achieved in the past. Um, so there's definitely more anxiety moving to this part of the tour and you know, it, it, being that it, it, it's home as well, you know, you feel like there's there's more weight on you and there's more people watching or there's more people to impress and that kind of thing. So that definitely uh, made us feel a little bit uneasy in all honesty going into the tour. It's easy to lose that perspective because you, you play shows in Kuala Lumpur or Vancouver or, or whatever and um, they're crazy and sort of the great thing about it is that you don't think it's going to be crazy. You just don't, you just don't know. And, so that surprise is really like gets your adrenaline going. It's it's a cool feeling. Um, so it's easy to take for granted when we play the UK. Like, oh, there's, only, there's just 600 people here. And you have to kind of remind yourself constantly that that's actually really good. And if I did that anywhere else in the world, I'd be really overwhelmed and really pleased. The overwhelming feeling for me in the UK though was that I was just running out of steam a little bit and the last few shows I was, I've never really felt like it on stage before where I'm physically just exhausted. Just being on tour for a long time I think it just eventually wears you down like I'm just, you know when you start a tour you're coming from home and you're healthy and you're, you know, in, in good condition I suppose. So that was uh, became a little bit of a problem for me towards the end, I, and it was frustrating playing and feeling like I'm not doing a good job, you know. But I think that that's just a feeling for me at the end, like we're just worn out. And as, as amazing as an experience as the whole thing was, it definitely felt like it was correct that that was the end, that was the last bit, and I was ready to go and sleep in my own bed. <laughs> The real weird thing about the UK run on this is that the London date is Warp Tour, um, which we had quite a lot of scepticism about because we wanted to do our own show and not a show with a bunch of pop punk bands, you know, no disrespect to them or anything, but uh, we, you know, we didn't know how it would be if there was very few heavy bands only, I was in Ring the Horizon, a heavy part of the bill on the main stage. I think there was maybe five or six heavy bands on the whole bill out of 25, 30 bands or something. So um, we're definitely outnumbered and there was quite a lot of scepticism about how we would go down. Um, I fucking like shit and I just looked out the crowd and was like, oh my god, mouth just got instantly dry like.
felt like uh, I was playing on a tiny little miniature toy drum kit on a giant stage in front of a sea of people, and that's quite a strange feeling. But when you when you have 10,000 people in front of you, there needs to be an awful lot of people there that are into it um, and are expressing their enthusiasm in some way for it to look good, you know. So. If, you know, you could, there could be a hundred people singing their hearts out, but it's not really going to make a dent in the crowd when there's 10,000 people there. Pretty much, I can find like a, a fond memory of every single day of the tour, whether it was, you know, it could be just somewhere in Canada or, you know, the Great Wall of China or something like that. Like, just cool things happened every day. And I think that we've been pretty treated by not only great shows, but we've been on tour with really good people. Uh, lots of old friends, lots of new ones now. The people that we've met on this tour and the people that have been on this whole trip will definitely stay you know best mates with for the rest of my life and you know it's been a a real you know learning curve for all of us you know we've learned a lot you know the fact that i didn't know that we could physically tour for three and a half months and still get on with each other and we have i think the the four of us are a lot tighter than we've ever been before which is if i'm honest pretty surprising considering we've just spent three and a half months crammed together. It's impossible not to have a, l a little bit of doubt or worry about the long-term future of the band. Um, I'm 25 now, which is obviously still very young. We recorded our first demo when we were 17, and we did our first tour when we were 18. We've recorded five albums, which is an awful lot, and it, it's hard when you see other bands shooting off past you that have maybe only started a couple of years ago or have only released a couple of albums and it and it and it does make you worry and it, and it makes you insecure and there is no doubt that Architects as a group is is very insecure not about our ability as musicians or as our ability as songwriters but just to be able to keep the band going because we don't make much money with that. I mean, the reality is we don't make much money at all. And, you know, we still, we're still doing it. You know, if we've been touring for seven years, most bands have been touring for seven years, we'd hope probably that there's some kind of gain from it and making some kind of money to live off. And, you know, we make a little bit. I have enough to buy food. I still live at home, so do the rest of the guys. And I couldn't even think about moving out because I, I just simply don't have enough money. I think the important thing to us is that we don't care about that. I mean, the important thing is that we can go on, do a tour like this for three, three and a half months and meet people and meet, play, see all these amazing places that most people would never get to visit in their life. It feels crazy to think that we've been away for so long and been in so many wild places. Some places that I couldn't even comprehend going to, like wouldn't even enter my mind to go and see. I think we've travelled more in the past three and a half months than a lot of people will probably ever do in their lifetime, which is a pretty insane thing to think about. Um, I mean, if I was in the band, I, I doubt I'd see half the places that we've been to. I never thought we'd play in Asia, Southeast Asia, and, you know, 
I mean, the whole tour, the, the whole expectations I had for the tour were just blown out of the water. It, it confirmed that we are doing a good thing and it was genuinely very humbling uh, to think back over all the places that we've been and think that all those people came and saw us. You see the, the songs that you've written at home being sung everywhere and, and it's almost incomprehensible. You can't really think about it. It's very difficult to get any perspective on it. You sort of have these moments where you're sat around and you, you get shivers thinking, oh my God, I can't believe that we've come this far. Uh, and I think it was really important for us to go around the world and see that there was, that there is all these people that care because that was the best way for us to get the perspective on, on what we've achieved as a band. It's easy to do one tour and you say, okay, well, people like us in those 10 cities, but when you go around and you do 70 shows and you see the consistency of the enthusiasm from people everywhere, it, it, it really uh, has given us a, a, a massive lift as a band.